Ladies and G's, boys and G's, it's the Forbidden Son of Athletics, Karabo J, with another episode of the Track and Setters at A. I am not alone, I am with. He is here with Tapelo Musanga, aka Tapizi. Ladies and G's, boys and G's, it's the Forbidden Son of Athletics, Karabo J, with another episode of the Track and Center ZA. I'm not alone, I'm with. He is with Tapelo, Msanga, aka Tapis, and we are here to give you guys another episode. What did you want to say? Negative, a negative introduction. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, ladies and G's, welcome back to another one, the Track and Center ZA. We are actually and officially six months old. Um, this is the 26th episode. Another six months, are you Yeah. The 26th episode, um, six months of shooting, six months of uploading every day on YouTube. Thank you so much to all the subscribers so far. Please do subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Please do watch, like, share with your family and friends or whatever. Um, because it's about to get exciting. We are talking about off season. Um, obviously, it's not exciting on the action side, but it's actually exciting on our side because we're going to talk about a lot of different things. You know that are not really athletics related but athletics related what i'm talking about is we're not going to talk about the competition stuff but surely the out of competition stuff so we're also going to go to maybe the out the off season route um but yeah man it's about to get exciting as well tapis is here i'm here the water is here the spikes are here um you are here that guy is playing music over there i hope it doesn't copyright us or that we don't get copyrighted yeah um or anything like that but yeah let's get into it we had the final Diamond League this week. It was oh Wednesday and Thursday, the 8th and 9th of September in mm-hmm. Zurich. Um, overall observation for you and overall uh, thoughts? Uh, it was it was in the Diamond League, actually. You know, some expected things that I didn't expect mm-hmm. there, but quite nah. It was quite nah. I enjoyed watching the Diamond League. Um, the winners that came out the invade it was quite nice to watch you know to watch people finish off their season and stuff like that i think uh that's quite you know something it's always something spectacle to see but then yeah i was i was quite happy with it i think for to say goodbye like that is quite it's quite nice i saw that the next diamond league will be coming on the 6th of may 2022 which is actually still so far away but then yeah, yeah you know now we have off season now we get to do different things yeah yeah, yeah. and it's not really the last of races it's um there's there's the estaf berlin world challenge it's just one more but i don't think a lot of people will go there a lot of them are done mm-hmm. you know they're, they're done they got their thirty thousand us dollars that dan has explained last week thirty thousand us dollars first place with the diamond league trophy mm-hmm. i mean it's, it's all amazing some people went for the double someone like fred Curley, andre de grasse a couple of um, women, Dinesha Smith as well. Yeah. So, so they tried going for the double. Um, did not get the double win, but got the double the price. You know, I'm well yeah, done yeah. to them. Um, the focus on some specific results, although we are going to mention all the Diamond League winners, but specific results for specific some some type some some specific events. Mm-hmm. Um, let's start with this one. It's already there. Let me start with it. The hundred meters. Fred Curley winning it 9.87. Yeah, that was second quite place under the grass in 9.89, mm-hmm. um, matching his personal best. And third place, Ronnie Baker, 9.91. That was also quite a uh, nice race. Unexpected. I didn't think uh, I didn't think Fred Curley was going to take it. I never expected Fred Curley to take it. But then, mm. uh, congratulations to him for being in that race. Quite people in that race that disappointed. Mm. Didn't expect him to run like that. Uh, mm. Simbini. Sure. Completely didn't expect him to go a 10-10 in sure. that race, but it is what it is. Sure. Season is over. He needs to go back, try to, you know, work and get yeah. get things in order. Try to work towards next season. next season Yeah. I looked at the race in this way. I mean, Ronnie Baker is the one that got the good start. Mm-hmm. He was, I think, leading the first 80 meters. Fred Curley coming through with his top range speed and top end speed. He came in, I mean, his strides are crazy, man, and he's so relaxed when he's running. Um, he just focuses on his form, form and relaxing. In a very relaxed state, Andre de Grasse is always pushing him. That's what I thought, because they were side by side, next to each other on the lanes. Caught up with Ronnie Baker at the end, won it with a 9.87. Um, I'm not I'm not shocked by some of the people's results, like Akane Simbini, Michael Rogers, or... Trevon Bromel because that's 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 the case 
this season um they have not been able to perform on big stages when they need to perform yeah you know um it's not that they're not big stage performers but this season they are not they were not showing up yeah. Kevin Bromel ran the world's best time this year at one point and unfortunately could not even get to an olympic final an olympic final you know? after that yeah. so i was expecting fred to be in the top three but not winning um we did not even predict this one i did not even think about predicting about it predicting yeah just, it. just yeah, wanted not to watch even, it you know just yeah. wanted to watch it and yeah. see how the season ends off yeah just wanted to watch it another thing is i think fred kelly is at the peak of his career yeah we're not is. aware of it yeah he's he's he's, he's one athlete who's dominating sprinting mm. because i think this guy can go for a good 400 yeah he can he go can. sub 44 with this with this shape the shape that is in right now he can go sub 20 and he can go sub 10 any day so this is what wade had remember the coming off yeah. 2016 yeah, 2017 yeah. i think wade had this type of fitness mm -hmm. and he lost it i hope fred kelly doesn't also lose it um but yeah well we can't say wade lost it he lost it injury he lost yeah, it. yeah exactly yeah. you say he got injured when you say he lost it it's like he was fit and he became unfit no but he lost it that's the reality Okay. As much as he was injured, in which we acknowledge that he was injured, but we also need to acknowledge that he lost it through injury. Not that he just lost it, but he lost it through injury. Okay, yeah. It does make sense. Are you okay? Cap. Are you okay? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't cut that out. You guys should see. That this guy was, was out for like a minute or so. <laughs> I'm okay. No, um, I'm in okay. 200 meters. Kenny Bednarek of the USA, 19.70. Mm -hmm. Andre de Grasse second Coming with a 19.72. Fred Kelly third this time with a 19.83. So him and Andre de Grasse got to medal in both 100 and the 200. Yeah. Yeah, they got to medal in both. Yeah. Um, Andre de Grasse taking silver in both the 100 and the 200. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Fred season, Kelly man. going first and third. Yeah. yeah, I think he's had quite a beautiful season. Yeah, Andre. For, for, for him winning the 200 meter Olympics. Yeah. Running so much PBs and he's starting to perform like the yeah. the Gressa we saw when Bolt was still around. So yeah. actually, let me not just say he's starting to perform. He came back and he's he's on a high level now. He's performing. Hopefully, he can keep the consistency. Hopefully, the fitness can keep going, and that next mm -hmm. year he can show us more beautiful times. There's also one dangerous athlete, mm -hmm. unpredictable. Um, he he knows how to finish the job. You know, if, if there's anyone you can trust that, okay, this guy can get the job done. You know, let's say we, we have a 4x4 four or 4x1 four relay. Mm -hmm. He's the guy you trust to never drop the baton and put us in a good position. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's just too good. Mm. He's, he's also got good range in the 100 and the 200. Yeah. Um, he's running consistent times. I mean, sub 20, even running sub, sub 10 as well. Um, I think the grass is going to dominate the 200 meters with no allows mm -hmm. in the next coming years because mm -hmm. when he gets into the correct shape he gives no allows a tough race he does yeah so it's gonna be maybe sort of a a a a, a oh, the thing is you can't compare both with anyone but a a a a, a weight for nicker michael norman type of thing uh let's say more bolt and uh that's the thing yeah Who you can you can, you can. bolt Le us with gatlin yeah, well, you Johan Blake, even Johan Blake in sense of Johan Blake was running uh, times very close to him. Mm. Um, you can't really compare the Michael Norman and Wade because they never raced, they've never had. Actually, they have, but never when they were both in the peak of their careers. Yeah, yeah, yeah different actually, timing. Yeah. yeah, different, different timing. Four hundred meters, men. Uh, Michael Cherry, a series. I think it's eight straight sub forty fives. 44.41 to win the Diamond League. Mm -hmm. Kirani James second, 44.42. This was a close one. I saw it. They fell over the line. Um, Dion Kirani Lando, James is also starting to start racing, yeah. you know? Dion Lando, 44.81. So the top three going sub 45. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff there. Um, yeah, as I said, I saw it. Michael Cherry dominating his races. Um, it's good sub 45 form for like eight races or seven. That's good. That's that's yeah, that's impeccable, man. Um, let's hope he continues. Yeah. And let's hope it doesn't drop it. If he continues this way, woo, come on, dude. If he continues this way, then it's gonna be interesting next year to see him at the World Champs. Yeah. Um, but what 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 my concern is with with next year, right? It's World Champs, and the following year is also World Champs, and the next year is Olympics. Olympics. So. 
what are these guys going to do that they are going to top in 2023? Because in sense of now, next mm. year and the following year after, um, next year being 2022, sure. and then the following year still being such a high stage to perform yeah. it, it makes it hard because now it's going to take consistency. Mm. It's going to take a lot of consistency to see who's going to be consistent over the years. Yeah. Who's going to keep running fast times and actually a lot of events, you know, where you're going to want to see what's going on. So actually look forward to it on seeing which athlete is going to be main, be able to maintain that, uh, that fitness and everything that's going to be, you know, going towards them. So I'm definitely mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing everything that's going to be happening. That Do you time. think Michael Sherry can be the world champ next year? 400. Yeah, with the cons consistency that he has. No. Okay, and, and why and who would you um, think that is going to win it, maybe? I feel like 400, man. 400 still has a lot of people who who need to prove themselves. You can never count anybody out. There's still the likes of the Kirani, there's the Michael Norman, there's the Stephen Gardner. There's so many names to put in yeah. of people that you could look forward to and expect to perform. So I think we can only predict that next year when we're in season one, we've seen how the people are running, what kind of mm -hmm. times they're producing. That's the only time you can come out and say, you know what, this is what I see. We can expect mm -hmm. fast times from him to win it. Uh, not sure yet. We can't put a prediction on that yet, but yeah. I think we can expect a beautiful season from him next year. Yeah. I think if he continues mm -hmm. and he has some type of progress and that's big progress, I don't think there's any athletes that really sort of regresses um so so if he has the right progress he's going to be a, a very dangerous athlete mm -hmm. because look at his his, his his technique it's so it's so it, it looks so easy and it looks so um appealing to the eye because okay. he uses less energy when he's running so he's, he doesn't use his arms a lot it's just his legs and when you look at him you you, you might think that this guy is slow yeah when but looking at the way he runs and you have a kirani james who comes into the last hundred his, his legs are almost his everywhere. legs yeah he yeah. has swinging leg. you know yeah he's the type of michael norman type of athlete so those are the ones that for me are really dangerous because once they switch to that aggressive side of them maybe the last hundred meters the last 50 i think that we're on to something but it becomes quite hard because being in a relaxed athlete is more of an advantage. It mm -hmm. makes it easier for you to kick, you know, if you're relaxed and you're moving quick and you have to pick up speed sure. and you don't have to tense up to pick up speed. It makes it easier for you. So yeah. I think that also makes them quite, dangerous. that makes them quite dangerous too. Yeah. So there's a lot to look forward to. Look forward to. One thing sure. we've seen is Wade still has the speed. He needs to get the stamina back. Yeah. He has still next year. We are. Ah, oh, there's still so much a lot everybody yeah. can do. We've and seen it. Yeah, yeah. We saw it at the Olympics sort of at Tunaba like Haka So yeah. those people are definitely gonna go back and do what they need to do. Yeah, it's it's, it's one of the reasons why I predicted that um Benjamin Rai Benjamin is gonna win the fun meter hurdles at the Olympics because I thought about the difference between him and Kasten and yeah. the way they run. So I thought Kasten can 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 flop, you know. But he doesn't. That's the thing. He doesn't. He's an aggressive runner. He doesn't flop. And yeah, that's just he's outlining super it. Just, he's just super yeah. consistent. Um, 800 meters. Emmanuel Courier winning it. 144.56. Winning the Diamond League and the Olympics this year. Ferguson Rotich second as he was at the Olympics with a 144.96. Clayton Murphy. Um, this was a close finish for the people third going for down. Third, yeah. Yeah, 145.21. Uh, any comment? Uh, I don't have any comment. Nah, I don't about have this. any comments. For yeah, it's just, it's just a couple of guys running an 800. They don't care about the time, but yeah, about the win. Just going for the yeah. win. Yeah. <laughs> and then the 1500 meters, we saw Jakob Ingebrigtsen and Timothy Chiriot battle again. Jakob lost this time. Close finish as well. Um, they fought till the last 100 meters, 331.37, and it 331.45. And then special mention, I think Oliver Ho, this guy is going to do something. 332.66 from Australia. He's really having some good progress. Um, closing a season of the personal best. Anything you have to say for, with the 1500 meters? Uh, 1500, nah, I would just say it's quite impressive also with them. They're racing mm. more to, you know, 
time. Just take the yeah. No, no, no. They're not. They're not looking at the time. It's more about the win and yeah. Yeah, and then the five thousand meters men's and women event was on day one on the eighth of September. It was it was on that weird, weird outdoor track. Yeah, yeah. track. Um, five, five. What is it? Five hundred and sixty meters per lap. Mm. Um, it was strange, man. People were even shocked that someone went sub thirteen, um, which was Berihu Agrihawi with a twelve fifty eight point six one, and yeah. There was no world champion. World champ, yeah. There was no second place from the world champ. Only Yomifke Jelcho was fifth um, with a 13.04. But I think that was the most stupidest way to do it, man. It's a Diamond League final and you are taking it to an outdoor track. Uh, it was different. It was, diff it was quite different for them, but... Not an outdoor track, but an out of stadium. An out of track. stadium, ah, yeah. Man. The one way it doesn't really count. Yeah, man. Ah, come on, man. You're killing the guys, man. They are used to, uh, in their minds, uh, 400 getting track. to that 3K mark. Mm. Getting to that 1K left mark. Mm. Now you are taking them to a 560 meter. Now they, it's so <laughs> hard to predict. Yeah. It's so, so hard to predict. You know, it's like the, one of those um, Boston City games, yeah. 200 meters. Yeah. It's so long, it, it, and the guys, like, they don't even know. You don't know. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was a bit weird. Um, 400, 400 meter men's hurdles. Kasten Valholm winning the Diamond League. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a consistent season, man. Ah, he's With had, a 47.35. He's had since last year. Since last yeah. year, he's been so consistent. Alison Dos Santos, the young Brazilian, 47.81. Karanam McMaster, third, 48.24. Yeah. This that is, was quite beautiful. Yeah. Also, a lot of the races, they're not racing anymore for times, but you know, mm. they were just racing for the championship. Yeah. Kasten Valholm. Again in lane seven or in lane eight, I can't remember carefully, but he was on the outside. Mm -hmm. Um, my 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 thing is Alison dos Santos, dude. The kid is his improvement. Yeah, his improvement is crazy, and I think we still have so much to see from him. I think mm. Asanta Tofi, he's still gonna get around. He's still gonna get around, and he's still gonna shock us actually. Yeah. I, think, I think he's gonna put himself in the mix with Rai Benjamin and yeah. Kastumbao. With 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 the way he's been doing things. He's literally replacing Samba. Yeah, he is. Yes, he's being the third man mm. running sub sub 47 easily and he's doing it quite well. He's doing it beautifully yeah. also. Um, Samba has been going through what he's going through. I thought after last season, he's going to have an opportunity to come back this season, yeah. but he didn't and the Santos is getting better and better. Yeah, unfortunately, you are done, mate. Um, at least I had a South African who sort of did well, Rashul Samai, and the long jump finishing third, 7.99 meters, almost going eight meters. Mm -hmm. uh, but the person who won the competition, the long jump was Tobias Montlier of Sweden, 8.17 meters, and then McCarter, 8.14 meters. Good one from Rashul in the season with the third place. Um, not the best season he has had in his life. Do you think people get medals at? No, definitely, no, it's just some good cash. Ne? Yeah. There's no medals. Okay. Yeah, it's just a trophy. It's 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 literally. Uh, it's literally. I I heard that. <laughs> like. Hey, it's literally. It's <laughs> our rain and so you're But anyways, it's literally um, like 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 you see when 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 the football has a league at the mm. end of the, the the season, the winner gets the trophy. The rest just gets prize money on yeah. the places they finished at. So it's But then I think all diamond leagues work like that. You get paid on your position, right? Yeah. 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 But the, the final there's more money. Um the triple jump, the men's triple jump, Pedro Pichardo, well done, man. I'm happy for you, seven I mean, point seven. I think he's he's definitely also dominating the mm -hmm. the triple jump stands for quite some time and he's doing a lot over there. Hugh he's doing a lot over there. Seventeen twenty, he had a good indoor season but could not really take it to outdoor. Um, Ryan Kraus, the first day winning the shot put men's competition with a 22.67, not going 23 meters this time around. Joe Kovacs second. Um, I don't know who this guy is, but Tom Walsh was fourth. And then in the men's discus throw, Daniel Stoll, 66.49. You know, they, 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 also, they also had that final three thing. Okay. Um, it sucks. Which sucks. Let's get to the women's results, man. Oh. 
Yannis Vetter finally won something. Um, <laughs> the Diamond League Championship with the 89.11 meters. And the way you say she finally won something. Yeah, he finally won something, man. I mean, this is the guy who will dominate Javelin and then not win anything. It's literally sad, man. It's sad when people do this. Let's when get you to do that, man. Yeah, let's get to the women's results. Shelly Ann. No, Shelly Ann was Shelly Annie. Not I was about to be like Lane Shelly Thompson Annie. Hera. <laughs> For a second, when you said Shelly Ann, I stood and I was like, I didn't see Shelly Ann at that final mm -hmm. Diamond League at the 100 or the 200. Elaine Thompson Hera, first 10.65 meeting record. Dinesh Smith, second 1087 season best. Well done. Um, Anya Alia Del Ponte, um, 1093 as well. That'll so, meet her having a good season. 10.93, she's closing. Well, Kampunja as well, 10.94. The ladies are going sub 11. They are. They Amazing are to beautiful. see. But Marie Jose Talu, I mean, last place, 11.22. Uh, should she call it quits? But let's first focus on the winners. <sighs> I almost wanted to answer that one. That was quite beautiful. I think also 10 6 5 to close off the season, man. Mm. She, she, since she ran the 10 54, she's been proving to us that she can do it. She's been consistent around the 10 6, 10 5 area. Mm. Uh, it's beautiful from her. That's all I can say. The Elaine Thompson, Hera, beautiful. Yeah, the dominance of Elaine has come with, with, with difference in, in, in the women's sprinting world. Mm. You know, um, there was a time where it was so unpredictable. You'd have a Dinesha Smith winning this week, a Elaine Thompson winning next week, or even someone else winning the other Shelly week. And but Fraser now, also. that dominance has, K has come with, with, with a lot of shift. Mm. That's, it's, and I think it's been a while since we saw something like this. We probably last saw it with, with um, Shelly Ann before the baby, mm. uh, before she went to maternity leave um, with, with the likes of Veronica Campbell Brown, who's the other one, Caminita Jet as well. So those are the ladies that had some type of dominance. But now when looking at Elaine, she's probably going to dominate the 100 meters for, for, for some good time. I hope so for her too, you know, with yeah. all the injuries she's also been going through and stuff yeah. like that. For her to finally start performing on such a good level yeah. is amazing. So I'm hoping that she, she keeps getting faster, man. Yeah, because you know what's exciting? Um, Shakiri mm. and the impact that she will have on them and the impact she has had already on them but they have not yet braked not even them <laughs> they have not braked <laughs> I'm still mentioning them I'm mm. not talking about Elaine you know she has not messed up a single race this season yeah when she needed to deliver she delivered I think she has won all that she needed to win at she the time. To win, she yeah. did not win all her races. I remember she once lost the race or something like yeah, that. Did lose, yeah, she did lose to Shelly and Yeah. So it's 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 quite I'm I'm I'll, I'm up for the, the athletes that are big stage performers. Yeah. The race was amazing as well. Dinesh Smith had a good start as usual. Um Mara Jose Talu nowhere to be seen. Elaine Thompson came forward to get the last 50 meters and and when she gets to a top end speed she's, she's gone she's amazing she's, yeah. she's just unstoppable yeah she's gone 200 meters women's race christine Mboma. i mean the youngster cannot look she man. can't disappoint man it seems like she yeah just... and, and she couldn't have done enough this is this is this is amazing from her she couldn't um, have done enough you mean she couldn't have done more more sorry yeah 21.78 to win the diamond league sharika jackson second with a 21.8 Personal best, yeah. Dinesha Smith third, 22.19 and she broke the world under 20 record, Christine Boma, and it's a, a African record, yeah, an African record. I don't know about that book. And I think now I hope that the Athletics uh, Federation will not... I'm only remembering what you said to me, but yeah. What do you mean? That... Ataka in. Any? Ataka in properly. Oh! That's Ataka in. I hope that the uh, <laughs> Federation doesn't do what they did because now that she's went down to 200 and she's delivering, mm. they mustn't go down and be like, nah, 200 is also an event where yeah. they can't compete. They could do that. Yeah. Because look at her. She's fucking curving like, mm -hmm. she's curving like a monster, dog. Yeah. Um, the dominance she's had is, for me, it's only because of her last 100 meters. She's super fast. Yeah, what bump? If she has a good bend, um, she can do well. 
uh shout out to their coach man let's give credit to that guy taking two athletes out of namibia you know um athletes we did not know before this year started i personally did not know them and then to to a diamond league winner to a world under 20 championship winner yeah to an olympic medalist you know so 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 it's a lot that they have done this year and it's also something that that for me is of concern the kid is only 18 literally born in 2003 can we please have some consistency take care of the talent don't burn it out yeah literally 22nd of may 2003 just you know she's still a junior next year imagine she's still she's still young exactly so this type of talent and an athlete let's 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 if 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 you if it were up to me yeah, the way i would manage someone this young i would decrease the number of races they would run i would choose the races that are important and manage them there do you understand that or or, or rather let them run with their peers but the other thing is she's too fast and there's a professional contract that she can sign and have that okay go on and win your professional races go on and win ah, but now money. you know what i say mm-hmm. there's one thing that i've always said when i'm a kid if if i would have been 17 18 yeah running 145 144 i was not gonna look for a way to say let me see how this is gonna be. i imagine that if i was gonna get faster yeah at that point now, at the age of 19, you'll run 142 mm. or 141. You'll run at 22, you'll be running 144. And you won't be able to run one. Oh, well, let's we'll go. go. I'll go for it. Yeah, th- yeah. honestly, it goes both Because ways. sometimes you can't, you, you'll say, okay, if I don't go faster, I'll keep this consistency. But mm. I don't know how long 143 will win me that race. Yeah. You know? I uh, yeah. So, our, as I always said, if I'm a kid, you can go fast. Go fast and yeah. you'll see in front. It's the same as Jakob Engel because yeah. he's still so young, running so fast. But he's not holding back and mm. saying, let me not run as fast now. Yeah. Because if your body's at a world record pace, sometimes you can be at a world record pace for two seasons or a season and you get out it, and you yeah. never go back. So, if you see your body's heading there, take, take the it there. Here. Take it while you still have it because you never know when that opportunity yeah. can present itself again. Yeah. I'm honestly not against that. Yeah, it makes a whole lot of sense. Um, but, what, but what I was saying is I would also opt for the go for go for the Olympics first. Go for the Olympics, go for the world champs. And then we can start chasing the time and the consistency. Because there's the likes of, um, I don't think he's even running now. We did not see him the entire season. Abdelati Igida. He runs the 1500 meters mm-hmm. that guy has been on the circuit for like 10 years yeah and he came into the circuit at the at a very young age i think 17 18 mm-hmm. and last year or the year before he was 32 33 so he has been so consistent maintaining those type of performances being invited to these races you know high profile meetings and just getting that money yeah. so th- that's that's maybe what i'm i'm, I'm trying to, to see but also, yeah, don't deny yourself an opportunity to, to run the good times. Don't deny yourself an opportunity to run the world record. Because at the end of the day, that might be um, the, your last your opportunity. One op- your one and only opportunity. To run that fast, yeah. Yeah. Um, going to the 400 meters women's race, Quanera Hayes won with a 49.88. Um, Polino, she's been doing amazing, man. She, she, I think she got third at the Olympics with a 49.96 or second. Yeah, she was second or th- second um 800 meters women's race kitty hodgkinson a youngster as well winning with a 157.98 um kate gray second 158.34 natoya gold closing the season with a 158.34 also another one kitty hodgkinson doing amazing for gb um herself as well still only 19 hope she has a good future yeah yeah hope she has a good future hope she can maintain it as well and i want to see uh prudence Khodi so running with these youngsters yeah right? i think it would be quite beautiful yeah. it would be good for her to push for a sub two mm. i think it would be quite 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 beautiful for her to push for a I sub think, two I to think give prudence her motivation yeah i think she can Next get year. it too definitely yeah i agree i can if she went to a one look prudence went to two in 2019 mm-hmm. now nah, i think it was in 2020 early 2020 before no COVID. it was 2019 
Okay. I'm gonna talk about a better Gina. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna talk better Gina. Okay. Yeah, 2019. Two, two, one in 2021. Right? We are most probably looking at a two flat season opener. Yeah. Or a two flat early season in South Africa, Feb, early March before provincial champs. And probably a, a further sub two. She because just next year she's actually a junior. No, she's she's a senior next year. She'd also just need, you know, to be able to go like a fifty seven the first lap. She'd be oh, able to be need crazy, to get that into a system. Because imagine yeah. in South Africa she can be running like what one or something. Mm -hmm. No, but then I think she can, man. For her to run two or one, no matter how much two or one, no matter what I first lip two, two flat, okay, one, one minute, fifty eight, fifty nine, no matter fifty eight, then ah, I got fifty seven. Ah, that can do a lot. Sub two. Look, if you go fifty seven, that means it's a one o one o one o two sixty two to get a sub two. Yeah. Hmm. Could be interesting, but she, be she's interesting. a senior next year. Um, training with the Sipen group. As we know, an exciting group really of, of fast distance runners, um, young ones. I think they have a good future there. Going to the women's 1500 meters, Faith Kipi Egon winning the Diamond League against Sifana San. What a final 100 meters. Um, 358.33, 358.55. Sifana San was really not um, letting it go easy. Yeah. But Faith, man, the, her speed is, is unmatched. I the thought Sifan. Also. Was gonna take good it. speed, yeah. But faith is, is unbelievable, man. That was an unbelievable race. Um, the 5,000 meter women's race, which was also outdoors in that venue, yeah. That um, Francine and Saba 1428 looks like she's dominating the 5,000. Uh, Helena Biri was second, and we're excited to see them on the normal track, man. I'm not gonna talk much about that because. It, that track was just an, another track. Yeah, it just wasn't um, doing a lot. 400 meter women's hurdles. Let's let's finish this episode. Femke Bo winning it after such a long season, winning mm -hmm. all the Diamond League races she has participated in. I think six Diamond League races, won all of them. Plus Betty Dow, no. 52.80 meeting record. Hey, Femke was actually born in 2000. But wow. <laughs> Um, Shamir Little. 53.35. I'm gonna if I'm, look if I'm a boy and Sydney McLaughlin no, are gonna do something for hurdling. Yo. They really are. And for a very long time. Yeah, let's let's look at some field results because um we don't have time. Yeah, we are out of time right now. Maria let's scan it, dude. She's she's world class. She went 205. After a season of going two meters, struggling to go over two meters at times, she went 205 with the world lead, a meeting record. And I think it's matching a personal best, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong. It's an elite What mark. is the high jump world record for women? 207, 207 or 208. Yeah. She's quite close. Hey, dude, but it's far. It's, okay, 205. Could be, two, could be 209, you know. Could be 209. But it's far, though. It's, 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 we, 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 it's close on, 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 on the realistic type of measurement. Yeah. But it's far when you're actually doing when high jump. When you think about yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Um, Mahuchik, the youngster, finishing second with a 2-3. Matching a season best as well. McDermott of Australia, 2-1. Well done to the top three ladies. The only ones going over two meters. Mm -hmm. And the pole vault, we saw Anzelika Sidorova of Russia. But she's not she's not representing Russia. Um, she's a neutral athlete. 5-4-1, joining that five-meter club. But she's the third woman to go over five meters meaning um sandy morris has gone five meters mm -hmm. but she has gone 501 and she's only the third one to maybe go 501 and further bit, yeah yeah um world lead diamond league record personal best third of all time third best of all time um i think coming to end of her career she's looking good um ivana spanovich long jump 6.96 kadia sagnia kadi sagnia 6.83 and Beck Romanchuk, 6.75. Yeah, the ladies not going over 7 meters in the mm. long jump, but good win for them. It's okay. Well done, ladies. Yulima Rojas won, dominated the triple jump as usual, 15.48 meeting record. Now, I want to focus on this event because well done on this person, Toby Amusen. Uh, 
I don't know if it's Amusen, Amusen. Amus, Amusan. Yeah, Amusan, because she's Nigerian. Well done. The first African, or not the first African, the first Nigerian to win a Diamond League trophy mm -hmm. um, with a 12.42 African record, personal best for her. Amazing stuff. That's where I'm going to leave it, Nadine Fisser. Well done for, to her as well. Another national record, another personal best with a 12.51. Megan Tepper, 12.55. And yeah, that's, that's, that's it from us. Um, let's mention the Diamond League winners. We close off the episode and we are done. 100 meters Fred Curley. This is the men's winners. 100 meters Fred Curley. 200 meters. Second 100 meters. 200 meters Kenny Bednarek. 400 meters Michael Cherry. 800 meters Emmanuel Career. 1500 meters Tim Chariot. Uh, 5000 meters Barry Hu. 3000 meters Benjamin Keegan. Um, the 110 hurdles Devon Allen. 400 meter hurdles, Carsten Valholm, High Jump, Tamberi, Paul Vault, Armando, Mando Duplantis, Obviously Long Duplantis. Jump, Montlier, Triple Jump, Pedro, Pablo Pichado, Short Put, Ryan Krauser, Discus Throw, Daniel Stoll, um, Johannes Vetter winning the Javelin, and the women's events, Elaine Thompson, Hera, 200 meters, Christine Mboma, 400 meters, Quanera Hayes, 800 meters, Kili Hoskinson, 1500 Faith Kibiegon, 5000 meters Francine Saba, 3000 meters Triple Chase Nora Geruto, uh, 100 meter hurdles Toby Emerson, 400 meters Femke Ball, high jump Marela Tsitskene, pole vault to the Rover, long jump Spanovic, triple jump Rojas, shot put Maggie Ewan, um, discus throw Valerie Orman, what a good performance from her as well, um, Javelin throw Christine Hassong. Uh, I think that was quite a beautiful uh, Diamond League final. I'm mm -hmm. happy with it. You know, the season is over. Definitely, everybody has now something to go back and work yeah. work on. So, man, I look forward to seeing what's going to be happening next year, guys. Yeah. Um, to, to, to top it off, thank you so much for everyone who competed this year. What a long year it has been. Well done to the Olympic champions. Well done to the Diamond League champions. Um, the World Challenge champions. Well done to 20 champions. It's just the full way of athletics and we saw why we needed athletics in our lives after, after being on lockdown last year, not seeing the best performances. Mm. Um, what a, what quite a year we had. Mufara not qualifying for the for Olympics, Olympics at all. Quite a shocker. You know, quite a shocker. Um, Elaine, Alison Felix, her last Olympics ever. Amazing stuff we saw this year. World records we saw. A Unfortunately, lot. not a world record at the Diamond League final. Um, but yeah, that was just about it. Track and field is sort of completed. Yeah, um, cross country championships this week, national championships. Those are gonna be interesting. Week. We're gonna watch it live. Um, we're gonna talk about it probably next week, Monday. We're looking at CGA cleaning out the, 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 the team places, the team, yeah, and also the individual prices. It's gonna be exciting. We're gonna see the 4Ks, the 10Ks, the 4Ks at the women's side, the 10Ks, 8K juniors. Everything. Yeah, look out for that. Athlete of the week. Uh, athlete of the week, uh, Elaine Thompson Hera, just for everything that she's nah, done. Man, nah. For me, I'm going to give it to her dog. Okay. For me, Toby Emerson, African queen, Nigerian, um, being the first Nigerian to win a Diamond League trophy. Well done. 12.42, 12, 12, 12 an African record as well. I'm happy to be African. I'm happy to be presented this way. She was so happy, emotional stuff. Um, yeah. Get to the end of the episode. As we said last week, we're doing it heritage month um talk about someone okert brits okert brits if you didn't know is the first ever man and the only man in south africa to go over six meters in the pole vault mm -hmm. as the south african meter south african south african <laughs> record, record hold in the pole vault the men's pole vault with a six meter and three centimeters um he he, he jumped that height in 1995 he currently coaches um in the western province you can get him there in pop and probably Berlin. That he's part of the group that's that's really, that's really starting to yeah, develop so much. Yeah. So yeah, um, probably get some videos of him to share with you at the end of this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I finally said it in full. It has been the Forbidden Son of Athletics, Karabo J, with another episode of the Track and Saturday. Day. I was not alone, I was with. He was with Tapil Mklanga, aka Tapis, and be a happy man. Uh, quite sad that the season is over, but then we're definitely going to be around. Let's go. Goodbye.